I am wearing a Ming Dynasty Aochun with a high standing collar, where some of you might recognize this as the Mandarin collar. Most people think the standing collar is derived from Qing Dynasty Manchurian dress, also known as the Changsam or Qi Pao. It is actually originally invented and passed down from the Ming Dynasty, the dynasty before the Qing Dynasty. It is a part of the Hanfu system and was later on adapted into Manchurian dresses. And today, it's widely known in the world as the Mandarin collar, and recognized as one of the most distinctive features of Chinese clothing. Now, before I go into details of my outfit, let's talk a little bit about the history of the standing collar. Do you remember this Ming Dynasty painting from my other video? Almost every woman and child is wearing the cross-colored outchun, showing how popular the style was at that time. However, when we look more closely at the painting, you can find a little button right in the center of their crossed colors. Let's look at the Ming Dynasty timeline. The Chenghua Emperor is the ninth emperor, and this painting was done in 1485. It's a representation of mid-era Ming Dynasty clothing style. Now, with almost 300 years of history, exactly how did the Ming Dynasty clothing style evolve? I thought of a really direct and simple method that is to study the paintings of all the Ming Dynasty empresses. Starting with the very first empress, Empress Ma, she wears a cross collar. Then Empress Xu still wears a cross collar. Empress Sun also wears a cross collar. Pay attention now. When it gets to Empress Qian, a vertical line appears in the middle of her collar, but without any buttons. And then by the time of the Chenghua Emperor from earlier, Empress Wang started wearing a standing collar with two buttons. Empress Zhang also wears a standing collar. Empress Chen is the same. When it comes to the last empress, Empress Wang, her clothing style has changed quite a bit from the previous ones, but she still wears a standing collar. Although the empress's wardrobe cannot define the clothing style of the whole nation, it's representative of the trend. From Empress Qian to Empress Wang, there exists a transitional period. In this painting during the Chenghua period, ladies already put buttons on their cross collars and they eventually evolved into a standing collar with two buttons. By the late Ming Dynasty, the standing collar had become a staple for women's wardrobe. It was naturally passed down into the Qing Dynasty. During the Qing Dynasty era, Han women continued to wear the Ming Dynasty clothing style while Manchurian women wore Manchurian dresses. The two clothing styles coexisted together for several hundred years, but eventually the Manchurian dresses went from having no colors to adding false colors to finally incorporating the Ming Dynasty standing collar. By the time of the late Qing Dynasty, standing colors had evolved into the modern Mandarin colors, which are commonly seen in Chinese dramas. They are a symbolic element of Chinese clothing today. Ming Dynasty ladies usually wear a mamian skirt or pleated skirt. I will talk about the mamian skirt in detail in another video. This one is a pleated skirt with pleats all the way to the bottom. I really like the printed designs on the skirt. They're all makeup and hair accessories from ancient times. There are usually two types of one-piece skirts. One style you insert a belt through a hole in the middle, the other style uses an extra set of ties. This is the first type. So after wrapping it halfway around the body, insert the belt into the hole. And wrap the remaining skirt to the back. Cross the belts from behind and then tie them up in the front. This is the standing collar owl or jacket. This style is found in many archaeological relics. 
always defined as top with lining. It has narrow sleeves. There is a middle seam on the back that represents a person's righteousness. There are four sets of metal buttons on the body of the owl, and additional two sets on the collars. It's made of pale pink jacquard fabric that is shiny under the sunlight. Keep in mind that Ming Dynasty people usually wore round collar inner garments underneath, which I don't have yet, so I'm just wearing a modern shirt. After putting on the jacket, align the buttons together. I will usually work on the buttons on the body first. And button the collars last because they are harder to do. Some people said to me that standing collars are not the most flattering on people with short necks. On the contrary, I think a well-tailored standing collar will make the neck appear longer. This particular collar size, however, is a bit too big on me. The back of the collar is slightly taller than the front, making it more comfortable for the person wearing it. Last but not least, I added a long necklace. If you find this video helpful, please like and share. I'll be making more videos on traditional Chinese culture, beauty, and fashion. See you next time.